Hello and welcome along to the next episode of my Camper Conversion YouTube channel. So this video is part of a series converting the VW T5 high top and this video itself is going to be fitting a split charge relay system into the van. Now the van itself I've got a 110 amp battery just in front of the kitchen unit down there. So I'm going to be running cables from underneath the floor mat up through the bulkhead down to where the battery is. Now in regards to the kits available I've gone for this voltage sensing split charge unit. Now I've bought just the unit on its own then I've also bought all of the individual wiring, fuses, uh, clamp holders, this, that, the other. Everything that I've bought here is being bought individually just to save that little bit of money. Now there are full kits available where you can buy the full uh, split charge unit, all the wiring pre-clamped, this, that, the other. So I'll actually put links in the description of the video below to both the entire kit and also to all the individual units that I've uh, purchased just in case you want to go down the route of saving that little bit of extra money and putting together all the cabling. Now wiring these in is very very simple itself you've got a main cable going in from your starter battery of the van then you've got another cable coming out that's the one that goes across to your leisure battery and then the unit itself just needs grounding off the leisure battery itself also needs grounding inside the van so if you were trying to have a isolated battery a split charge unit won't work because the uh, the leisure battery still needs to make contact with the chassis of the van just to create that full circuit feedback to the main starter battery I so while you're in though it's really really simple really really easy so I'm going to start getting some of these cables crimped up together just with the terminator cable uh, connectors on I've got some 100 amp inline fuses they'll be getting put on both the starter battery and the leisure battery side as well again just for safety in case there were ever any power spikes or surges it'll always blow the fuse first rather than doing any damage to the batteries or the wiring. So I'd say very simple, very straightforward. It should take probably less than an hour to do in total. So within the next five to 10 minutes over this video, I'll run through exactly how you wire it all in and show it all working. So for wiring the actual unit itself, the back of the unit just pops off while it's not screwed into place. Obviously when it's screwed into place, the screws go through the back cover and that hold that in place as well. Inside, very very simple, you've got one ground wire that just needs going off to the chassis somewhere. You've got your positive sensing battery, so that's for your starter battery. And then you've got your second battery, again the positive wire only, so that goes off to your leisure battery or your battery bank. That's it, and then as I say it's just a case of making sure that your leisure battery is going to be grounded as well. So we'll crack on, get the cables crimped up, get it all fitted in. So to be running the cabling for the split charge system, I'm going to be taking out the passenger seat and running the cabling underneath the mat. That's where I've already got a lot of the cabling coming for the uh, power for the fridge and also for the electric seats. So there's already an actual cable channel going through there for all of your normal electrics that are underneath the driver's seat as well. So to remove the driver's seat, uh, sorry the passenger seat, whether it's a double base or a single, it's just a normal 16mm socket set. Take out the nuts, take out the seat, then we'll be able to peel the mat up, lay this cable through, and then I'll be able to show you the grommet in the uh, bulkhead. That's where the cable will be getting poked through and ran up to where the split charge is next to the battery. So I'll get the seat out, get the mat up, and get cracked on. So there's the seat out. It took two minutes, I didn't even bother filming it because, as I say, it's just taken off four nuts. That's it. And the seat just lifts straight out. So now it's just a case of peeling up the rubber mat and that'll expose the actual bare floor and then we'll be able to see where the cables need channeling through. Right, so that's all the cabling routed on the inside of the cab. As you can see I've got the main cable running inside the actual main plastic shielding. That's where all of the other cabling goes as well. It just loops around the top and it pokes through the grommet that I showed you from the other side that's more accessible from the actual bonnet area. As I said, then just runs straight down, following the channel, and straight under the seat. And this is where I'm going to have the battery, so I'll pick this up when I've actually got the battery and got that in place. But the cable's just coming out there, plenty of slack on it as well. So I just need to get the connector crimped onto that, actually get a battery, and then we'll be able to get it all wired in and tested. So 
Right, so that's all of the cables all crimped up. I've got the cable ran, as you saw, underneath all the matting, going down to the front area there. I'm going to be mounting the split charge just onto a little unit that's going to be boxed in over the battery, just like that. So I'm just about now to uh, wire it in. I'm going to be putting the ground off to one of the bolt, uh, securing bolts for the seat base as well, just for the actual grounding for the split charge unit itself. I've got the battery uh, grounded off to a grounding off point down there on the bare metal. So that's pretty much everything ready to go. So it's just a case of connecting up the uh, actual connections. As I said, that one's going for the main sensing battery. Then I've got a little cut there that's going to be going through the unit. It's on a 100 amp inline fuse. I've also got another one of these at the start the battery end as well. I'll show you that in a second. Just in case there were any issues, it would pop that fuse first. So now it's just a case of getting them all connected up, giving it a fire up and showing everything working. Right, so that's all of the wiring for the split charge, all finished in and the unit's now mounted in place. It's a bit awkward to see where I've actually put it, but as I say, it's all wired through. So I've got the wire going from the start of the battery going into the unit, then another cable going out to the leisure battery, but it's got a 100 amp inline fuse that's bolted through to the cables. That's just taped up with electrical cabling just to make sure that it can't touch anything, even though the cable's that taut really. It's not really anywhere for it to go. And it just pokes through and it's connected up to the battery there. Now at the moment, there's no light on it. As I said, it's quite hard to see. You might not be able to see it there on the camera, but there's no light on it at the moment. Because even though the solar panel is on, it hasn't reached a 13.4 volt charge, which would initiate the, uh, the split charge, which would, in theory, charge the start of the battery. Now because the solar's not quite hit the panels yet, it's getting there, it, it is starting to go up, but as I said, before it does that, I'll just show you the wiring under the bonnet. So again there, I've got it poking through and I've fully sealed over the uh, hole. I'm going to put another layer on now it's in place just to actually make it watertight. That means that the cable can't chafe against the actual metal where I've had to drill through, just to get the cable through. And again, it's got another 100 amp inline fuse directly wired to the battery at this side as well just for protection more than anything else. So now if I just start the engine up, the split charge relay should click in. Yep, there's the light just came on. Just see the light there, the little red light. So that's indicating that the charge is now going through into the leisure battery because the van's now started up. It does also work the other way around as well. So as I say, when the solar panel is charging above 13.4 volts into the leisure battery, that will then also start charging the start of the battery at the same time. Now we're just using the solar panel monitor as a little battery monitor as well. You can see that's jumped up to 14.7 volts. So that is kicking out maximum charge through to the leisure battery basically because both the batteries are fully charged, both the starter and the leisure battery are fully charged already. You can see there, as it's a nice, neat enough install. And it just means that whenever the van's on the move, it's always going to be charging up the leisure battery. And if it's ever parked up for a long period of time, the solar, the solar panel will keep the starter battery fully charged as well. That's the good thing about these uh, split charge relays. So when I turn the engine off, the light should go out. And once it normalises the voltage between the two batteries, as I say, that'll kick off and uh, disconnect. So there we go, that's how I've wired my fully voltage sensing split charge relay into the van. As I say, I'll put links in the description to this unit, all the individual components that I've used to make my own. And I'll also put a link to the full complete kit in case you don't want to go through the rigmarole of having to cr uh, clamp up and crimp up your cables, this, that, the other. So have a look in the description. There'll be plenty of links to the full kit and the individual unit pieces as well. So as I say, they're well worth the money for the sake of, I think this unit's less than £30. 
by the time you add in all the other components you're talking around about 50 or 60 to 70 if you buy the full kit but in theory it does mean that whenever you're driving around any leisure batteries that you do have should never run out of charge or at least unless you've been parked up for a long long time and that's when your solar panel comes into play so i hope you found this video useful if you did do give that good old thumbs up leave me a comment down below as well and if you haven't already do hit that subscribe button have a look at my channel because there's loads of content on there i'm documenting everything i do with this van job by job there's a full t4 fully documented on there as well as well as a couple of small little budget camper conversions i've done so hit that subscribe button thumbs up leave me a comment and hopefully i'll see you on the next video of this series thanks for watching cheers